Have you ever wondered what's behind that too good to be true email? It's no secret there are fraudsters out there trying to bilk you out of money and they know how to get to you. But getting them is a lot harder. In today's special report, Rob Lurie has a story of one man's close call and some advice on how to protect yourself. What a monster. Love it. Stephen Orsini is a car guy and has been for most of his life. But his dream ride... <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, 264 V8. Was this 1955 Buick Classic? It was a dream of mine to have a classic car since I was 16 years old. And when I got it in 1996, I was ecstatic. But 15 years later, things changed. Stephen had two kids and new priorities, and the car had to go. How hard was it to place that ad? It was very difficult, very heavy, very, very heavy. He used the website Le Pack. I got this email from this guy named David. Uh, he emails me, says, I have great interest for your car. I'm in the uh, business of dealing cars, and I have an interest for it from a customer in Alaska. I said, fantastic. The further it is from me, the better. I won't have to see this car. I won't feel bad seeing it drive down the road. David asked the typical questions, like mileage and condition, and they finally settled on a price. He says, I'm going to send you your money plus extra because the shipper is local and needs to be paid. So I'm going to send you more, and then what we'll do is you'll cash the check and then wire the money through Western Union to the transport company's bank account. But after reflecting, something sounded a bit off. Every time you asked him to call you? Nothing. No call, no suggestion from his end to call. Stephen still went ahead with the deal and days later received a check in the mail. It came from the Czech Republic. While it looked authentic, the check turned out to be bogus, but the bank wouldn't have picked that up for several days, if not weeks. By this point, Stephen and his wife were worried, so they called police who told them it sounded like fraud. What happens is that once you've wired the money to Western Union, there's no shipper that comes, the check bounces, and then you're out the shipping costs equivalent, which in this case was approximately $8,000. It's actually really big. Terry Cutler is a cybersecurity expert who's worked with police to locate international fraudsters. It's growing. It's, it, this is the crime of the future. No one's robbing banks anymore. Everything's going to be online. In spite of that, he says neither the websites nor police do enough to stop this type of crime. It's very hard to keep up with, with the latest changes and the, re and the resources as well. So the, uh, unless you're trained in this stuff, it's, it's become very costly and very resourceful. Even police admit the criminals are often one step ahead of law enforcement. The Canadian Anti-Fraud Centre gets hundreds of calls a year for this type of online fraud. But they say they're up against organized crime syndicates. They could be using uh, a Montreal cell phone number while they're in uh, downtown Lagos, Nigeria. And he adds, the scammers are experts at covering their tracks. If they have you wire money to a bank account, it's a bank account that's been set up either with phony ID or they're hijacking some innocent person's account temporarily. They may give the victim an awful lot of information, but it's not information that leads directly to them. What keeps police from going after them? These investigations require international cooperation and many hours of manpower. It's just too much. So stakeholders focus their energies on prevention and educating the public. It's a very big priority for us. Here at Kijiji, they monitor the back and forth between sellers and buyers. Their best advice is when it comes to large ticket items, they say any mention of shipping raises a flag. Ultimately, they say sites like theirs are meant to be used locally, and users need to use common sense. Would you send someone a check via the mail um, for a car that, that they're selling or for a large ticket item that they're selling? Um, you know, it's really important that users, um, you know, be cautious when dealing with others. In the end, being cautious kept Stephen Orsini from being scammed. He never shipped the car but it all left a bitter taste. It's very sad to see that somebody sits at a computer, perhaps like you mentioned, in an internet cafe trying to steal my money from me. Money that I didn't even have, to be honest with you. He ended up selling his car for less than he hoped, but to an honest person. In the end, his dream car almost became a nightmare. And now, whenever he browses online, he's always wondering who's on the other side. And what do they really want? Rob Lurie, CTV News.